hope, learning, knowledge, play, understanding, changing, right, wrongs, chances, create, equality, respect, teachers, pupils, hope, gobeithio. Teachers have a special place in our lives. They're trusted and respected and work to open up life's chances for all. Teachers have tough and magic moments, often many. Pupils have them too. Together, these moments forge life paths. As one early president said, the NUT was about elevation of the teacher, by which we elevate the value of education and accelerate the progress of civilization. When a hundred teachers assembled at King's College on the 25th of June 1870 to form the National Union of Elementary Teachers, there were no combustion engines or phones, no cars, theory of relativity, no aeroplanes, no antibiotics, no internet or discovery of DNA, and no thought of landing on Mars. Indeed, it had been just 36 years since the Tolpuddle Martyrs were exiled to Australia for forming a union, and five years since the abolition of slavery in America. How the world has changed between 1870 and 2017. Teachers have had to embrace the change and make it understandable to all. There was then and there is now. Injustice, inequality, too much pressure, too little trust or respect from the establishment and government, too little resource, not enough time to do the job. Who could imagine that 100 pioneers with a volunteer general secretary would grow to 330,000 members with offices and lay organisation in every community of England and Wales and with partner organisations in Scotland and across the globe? The driving sense of purpose was of care for children and communities and a recognition that investment in teachers was an investment for all. The union has been an essential part of educational, civic and political life, evolving to meet dramatic challenges and witness to momentous events. Education Act to educate all 5 to 12 year olds, resisted to the end by manufacturers and farmers and employers of children, Defeat of the hated payment by results. One of its greatest ever victories, a national state-aided system of pension. Building its own headquarters, Hamilton House, which because of anti-union laws could not be owned in its own name. It cost £39,898 to build. Fully half of all male teachers enlisted, and many died during World War I. The Burnham Committee was established to bring sense and equity to dealing with teachers' pay. The NUT had become the most public advocate for equal pay for men and women teachers. Many NUT teachers became suffragettes, securing the vote for women. It fought the Geddes Acts, savage funding cuts of the interwar years. It joined forces with the TUC to lobby for an end to charging for entrance into secondary education. Each radio or Pathé news broadcast brought home the growing threat of fascism. Some teachers volunteered to fight in the international brigades in Spain, including its battalion commander, 
who went on to become a chemistry teacher and a member of the NUT. Early in World War II, teachers were central to the evacuation, largely based on schools. The moving of three million young people out of cities, away from potential bombing, in 48 hours without a single fatality, is still the biggest movement of humans ever in Britain. The Education Act declared, the accidents of parental circumstances or of the place of residence shall not preclude any child from receiving the education from which they are best capable of profiting. A future for all. The NUT led the struggle to make education comprehensive. Abafan the greatest peacetime loss of life in schools. Membership reached 300,000. The NUT affiliated to the TUC. Following a determined struggle, the Houghton Report led to a dramatic wage rise and the school leaving age was lifted to 16. A young teacher, Blair Peach, was killed during a protest against racism. The Baker Act sought to roll back previous gains, a battle was joined that continues to this day. Privatisation became the mantra driving government policy. Germ, a global education reform movement emerged, aiming to privatise schools everywhere. The union began to strengthen the case for professional unity. The NUT led a campaign against government intrusion into the classroom and curriculum opposed league tables, which set school against school, and performance pay, which set teacher against teacher. Through 147 years, the union sought to do away with elitism and the squandering of potential, opening the gates of learning to all, regardless of social class, ethnicity or gender. It accents popularised alternatives to the privatisation policy of government. Bring down the barriers. A good local school for every child. Schools speak for themselves. Combating stereotypes. Reading matters. Born to be great. And only recently, it reached into thousands of homes to speak to millions of voters with a manifesto for education. As an organisation, it has often initiated the very change it sought. Its first woman president, Isabel Cleghorn, was elected. Its first black woman president, Baljeet Gale, was elected. Doug McAvoy became its first elected general secretary. Its first general secretary from a comprehensive school, Steve Sinnott, was elected. Its first woman general secretary, Christine Blower, was elected. It elected its first Welsh-born General Secretary, Kevin Courtney. From its inception, the NUT was a members' union. It opposed corporal punishment from day one, helped shape local education authorities and democratic school governance, pioneered integrating children with special needs into the classroom, did not flinch when the papers set about it, nor did it back down when ministers sought to blame and bully, nor will it, not ever. The NUT has never wavered in its aim of involving, representing and supporting each member. The NUT bore witness to and was an agent of change across three centuries. It is proud to take the sense of values and sense of purpose it forged into the union of the future the National Education Union. Hope. Learning. Knowledge. Understanding. Changing. Bright. 
Wrongs. Chances. Equality. Respect. Teachers. Hope. Isn't it our job to persuade the unions to accept government policy? No, Bernard. It is our job to get the government to accept union policy. And since government change policy all the time, and unions never change their policy at all, <laughs> in practice, common sense requires that it is the government who must be brought in line with the unions. Yes, Prime Minister. <laughs>